Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and we're back with another Total War Warhammer video. There seems to be a lot of speculation regarding the Ogre Kingdoms and their eventual inclusion into Total War Warhammer 3. So I wanted to take the time in this video to have my own speculations on it. You see, the Ogre Kingdoms are a much requested race to join the Warhammer series, an army of rather brutish monstrous infantry being carried around by even larger monstrous beasts. The race itself is rather unique, both in terms of lore and on the tabletop, and played very differently from the other races, not only because it's an army of monstrous infantry, but also because it's an army that was very low in number. In terms of law styles, the Ogre Kingdoms were themselves hordes, but very small hordes to be in fact. That being said, a small horde of ogres would be much more destructive than a medium sized horde or even a large sized horde of beastmen. Having personally played against and with the Ogre Kingdoms on the tabletop, I can see why they are so highly requested to join the Total War series. And with all that being said, the Ogre Kingdoms might not be as far away from launch as people might expect. There are some who believe that they might be the pre-order incentive for Total War Warhammer 3. However, I personally believe that the Chaos Dwarves will be the pre-order incentive. So for all intents and purposes, in regards to this video, let's just pretend that the Chaos Dwarves are indeed the pre-order incentive. So if that is indeed the case, then when would the Ogre Kingdoms realistically be released? We don't have an official release date for the third game, however, we do have the trends from the previous games. The first proper DLC for Warhammer 1 and Warhammer 2 were indeed race packs. Warhammer 1's first DLC was The Call of the Beastmen, and Warhammer 2's first DLC was The Rise of the Tomb Kings. Of course, before that was the Blood for the Blood God DLCs for both respective games. However, we'll take those out of the equation because, well, they're a cosmetic. I don't really count them as an essential DLC. Given the trends in regards to all the previous releases, what we first can expect is the Blood for the Blood God DLC once again. Blood Pact DLCs are normally released around a month after launch of a game. It can be assumed that the Mega Map, which fans are calling the Immortal Empires, will launch alongside it. And then three months later, more or less, we'll see the first DLC. This DLC would be presumed to be a race pack, and the Ogre Kingdoms might be the best opportunity here. So why Ogre Kingdoms? Well, there are a number of reasons. As far as we've seen from the trailer and information given to us in regards to the third and final game, Warhammer 3 will be very chaos-centric, and will already have that from launch which is also precisely the reason why I think the Chaos Dwarfs will be a pre-order incentive, as it fits with the whole Chaos theme. It will also launch with Cafe and Kislev, two good factions, so we have the whole typical good versus evil route. So in my opinion, and remember this is all speculation, it might be best to release the Ogre Kingdoms as the first proper DLC. Simply put, in regards to alignment for Warhammer's universe, the Ogre Kingdoms are considered to be neutral. They're self-serving and don't really fall under the two main alignments of Warhammer Fantasy, which was Order or Destruction. Chaos fit into Destruction over here. Good vs Evil is the typical fantasy trope, and it could get kinda boring, whereas the release of a completely neutral faction changes up things just a tad here. This was already done once before with the Rise of the Tomb Kings, as the Tomb Kings themselves are one of the few other true neutral factions. Bear in mind that in Warhammer Fantasy, neutrality is its own grey area, but the reason why this would work is that a neutral faction would have its own complete storyline. For example, the Tomb Kings themselves were focused around the Black Pyramid. Stuff was happening in regards to the Vortex and all that around them, but they were more focused on their own specific goals. 
the Ogre Kingdoms also would presumably have their own storyline, possibly focusing around uniting the tribes and becoming the Ogre Tyrant. This is a massive part in the Ogre Kingdoms lore. Whereas if you look towards the Chaos Dwarfs, it's likely that they would form more part of the Chaos storyline. Don't get me wrong, the Chaos Dwarfs themselves do act independently, but a Chaos-centric race pack for the first just seems a tad too focused on a specific type of player. Whereas a neutral faction, and one so unique, would probably be at a higher interest to the player base as a whole. I know some people might be suggesting the fact that the Dogs of War have not been added in, and in all honesty, I do find it extremely strange that they've not been added in as of yet. Warhammer 1 was probably the best opportunity for them to be added in. Warhammer 2 also had a bunch of famously known areas which are run by the Free Peoples. Warhammer 3, not so much. There's still possible Dogs of War camps, but it just feels like it fits the Ogres better to be first. My only hope is that if the Ogres do get added in, it will either be with or after a rework in regards to the Horde factions as I'm assuming that the Ogre Kingdoms would be a pseudo-horde faction in a very similar sense to that of the Vampire Coast, mixed with a few elements of Norska, where they'll be able to build around the areas of the Mountain of Morn, take over special areas such as Altdorf, all those types of capitals, but for the most part act as a horde faction. It just feels like the Ogres would be the best thing here, of course, this is pure speculation and I could indeed be wrong, but they are one of the last remaining 8th edition army book races which have yet to be announced or implemented. But what do you guys think about the Ogres being the first possible DLC pack? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and let's start a bit of a discussion. But with that, my friends, we've come to the end of our video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, might I suggest giving the video a like or even subscribing to the channel as it really does help us out. In the description section below are various links to different social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram and Discord. Also in the description section is an affiliate link with Element Games where you could buy loads of hobby based products, not just Warhammer, for 10-25% to off. Making a purchase using that link and also our special code which is also in the description supports the channel at no extra cost to you, which we think is rather cool. A big thank you to our Patrons, your support means the world to us, it's amazing that people want to help a small channel like us grow and get to a higher level of content. A big thank you to Gibraltar LUSC, Ryan Birch, Andrew Prince and Okro for subscribing to us at our fame level, you guys are super cool. And a big thank you to Edward Yule, VS Fasan, Aaron Whitman and Shaggy for subscribing to us at our king level, honestly we can't thank you all enough. And lastly, a big thank you to all of you for liking, sharing and commenting on these videos. Honestly, it's because of you guys that the channel has been growing at such a great pace lately, so we can't thank you all enough. But with that my friends, thank you so much for watching once again, and we shall see you all again very very soon. Have a good day.